come for you. Come for you. Here we are. Yeah. Have one for me. <laughs> Tell me, Phil. If your paper wants to spend ten thousand pounds buying some pathetic villain's story, that's their business. 
But it was your case. You put him away. Five years ago. If Georgie Mello hadn't robbed a bank and run down a copper in a stolen jag, you wouldn't have given him tuppence for a statement. Never mind 10,000 quid for his story. So it's a lot of money, but it sells newspapers. Well, if it does, I don't understand the logic. Who the hell wants to know about Georgie Mello? Never did a single constructive thing in the whole of his miserable life. But there's a fellow here. Devoted his whole life to growing roses. Created no less than four internationally known hybrids. Get away. He rates two paragraphs in a seed catalogue. I'd have thought that sort of dedication was worth more. Help! Help! Somebody go and help me, please! Help! Help me! Help me! No, 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 please! Yes, sir, I've got all that. Yeah, I'll bring the local physics. Yeah, it's Collins, isn't it? Yes, he's on the motorway kidnapping. Well, I can see he'd have his hands full with that lot, but I don't see what... Well, the whole team's busy, sir. Well, you must have someone. All right, sir. I'll get down there myself. Right. Bye. Just lock the car, will you? Yeah, who's the DI on the job? Porter. Anything for me? If there is, you'll hear about it from the press bureau, and I'm afraid you'll have to excuse us. Oh, now, look. My newspaper's always gone out of its way to cooperate. All right. So cooperate now. Let me get on with my work. Right away. Bloody newspaper men. Oh, they had their uses. See you down, We're going to 27 Cartwright Crescent. Right. That's all I want. Right, sir. You can take him down to the mortuary now. Right, sir. Oh, Porter. Sir. Did the pathologist take finger scrapings? Uh, going to do it down in the mortuary. Fine. Well, I'd like a word with the home beat man. What, in here, sir? Yeah. Right. Oh, it's Nash, isn't it? That's right, sir. Tell me about it. I was informed of the incident by Mrs. Lomaz. I immediately reported to the station by radio and accompanied her to the scene. The front door was open and I gained immediate entrance and discovered the deceased... Look, you're not in court, lad, in your own words, eh? The dead man is Joseph Libert, sir. It's better. Uh, local postman. Lived here since 1946, according to the neighbours. His wife discovered the body. She'd been out shopping. By the time I got here, she was in a dreadful state, sir. Mm. I imagine she would be. I'm not going to worry you any more now, Mrs. Limit. But as soon as you're feeling a bit better, I'd like you to come down to the station and make a statement. Nothing to worry about. Just to tell us everything that you can. Now, I'm sorry we can't make you a cup of tea, but we can't touch anything in here yet. You understand? Inspector Ward, I could ask the lady next door to make her one. Yes. Do that. The Libbets were quiet and unobtrusive people, sir. The sort who blend into the background, if you know what I mean. You know you beat well. I live in the next street, sir. You know the Libbets personally? Well, enough to pass the time of day with him. I don't think I ever spoke to her, though. Did you know about this? No. I don't think anyone else did, either. Uh, I'd always understood that they were Austrian refugees, or... Never heard anyone say anything bad about either of them. Anything from Mrs. Libbett? She's not with us much. As far as I can gather, she got back from the shopping and found him. She's no idea who might be responsible. Mm. Have we started house to house yet? Yes. The locals are on the job. Anything? Not much. The neighbours on this side were always complaining about the noise, music. Always? Apparently he used to play it every evening. Same piece with the volume full up. And then two weeks ago, he stopped. They didn't hear it again until today. God, I wonder when that was last in the charts. Did they know about this lot? Not a thing. It seems they hardly knew the Libertas at all, except to say good morning to. That's him. Thirty years ago, but it's him all right. Obersturmfuhrer Joseph Lebherz, Auschwitz, 1942. Lebherz, Libert. Too close to be a coincidence. Obersturmfuhrer. Lieutenant, sir. SS. You're an authority on this sort of thing, mate? No, not really, sir. Well, there's been a couple of old war films on the telly recently. I uh, quite enjoy them, you know. Bit of action. It's more entertaining than a lot of the stuff they show us. Yeah, I was there, lad. Didn't seem all that entertaining at the time. So look at this lot. And pick thugs. Morons. Animals. 
Joseph. <laughs> They've taken him away, Mrs. Levitt. You'll be able to see him again later if you like. And you know all about them, do you? The SS and the camp guards? I don't think it registered on her. She hardly heard a word I said when I was with her earlier. Anyway, she must have known about his background. Yes, I suppose she must. I don't like this one. I don't like all the trappings. That Star of David on his forehead. It's too bizarre, too melodramatic. Meine Ehre heißt Troja. What? It's the inscription on the blade, the SS motto. My honor is true. Try and drink it, dear. Well, she certainly had a hard time lately, and that's for sure. Her only son was killed a fortnight ago. A murder accident on the M1. Worked in Darlington, was on his way down to see them. They had to go and identify the body. And then today, she gets back from the shopping and finds her husband. Finds him. Supposing she was... Motive? Yeah. Wouldn't make much sense, would it? I'm holding on for Inspector Carmody. Chief Superintendent of the Kingdom. Yet he knows what it's about. And I doubt if she's got the strength. Oh, a special branch. Some psycho? Possibly someone he's never even met. The man was stabbed while he was sitting poring over all that junk. I doubt if he'd just sit there while Chummy circled around behind him. After taking the knife off the table, because that's obviously where it was to start with. But Chummy could have been in the room all the time. Now, oh, come on. Yeah? Uh, Detective Inspector Connolly, Special Branch. I'm holding on, waiting to speak to you. Yes, they told me you were calling, but I thought I might just as well pop down. And what was I supposed to be doing while you were popping? I'm so trying to find He's here, it's all right. And my governor told me to give you any assistance I can. Yes, we know that, Mr. Carmody. All right, well, sit down. Tell me what you know about Joseph Lebhurst. Sorry, love. You really ought to watch where you're going. Here! Wait a minute! What was all that about, then? Nutcase. Or guilty conscience? Do you know her? Mrs. Gruber. CID better take a look at this lot. Do you, uh, do you want to take it back to the station? Are you trying to lumber me? I've checked with alien registrations and the Home Office. The Leopard's family registered as Austrians when they first came to this country. Uh, but in point of fact, we now discover that they were German. Yes, we got that from Mrs. Leopard's statement. For what it's worth, her name is Hannah, not Anna. Hannah? Hmm. What about him, Joseph? Oh, we haven't got anything. Ex-Nazi, possibly a war criminal. Well, I try sending his fingerprints to the West German police, but... You've done uh, that already, Mr. Carmody, uh, as a matter of course. Quite. So I'd be grateful if you'd stop trying to teach me my job and tell me what Sorry. else you've got. Well, it's, um... It's perhaps a trifle embarrassing. What is? Well, by that I mean... It's all part of history now, isn't it? I mean, the picture's changed so much, hasn't it? People who are now highly respected and influential may once have been involved with the Nazis, but nearly 30 years ago. Come to the point. This photo that you sent over. One of the SS officers in this group with Joseph Lebertz. No. Yeah. He's Otto Bruchner. And who's he? <laughs> well, now he's a senior executive with the Dortmund Royal Chemical Corporation. No. Yeah. He's in charge of their London office at present. Yeah. And he's about to become honorary commercial attaché at the West German Embassy here. Oh. Why didn't you tell me this before? Well, we only discovered ourselves 20 minutes ago. I copied out the names on the back of that photo and teletyped them to Bond. The rest of the group are believed to be either dead or missing. 
And this man Bruckner's got a diplomatic job lined up, despite the fact that he was a Nazi, an SS officer, and a concentration camp guard. Which hunting days are over? I'm not hunting witches, but there are some things you don't forget. I saw one of those camps at the end of the war. You put it out of your mind, but you don't forget. Well, there's your motive then. Someone else who didn't forget. A vengeance murder. One of them came back from the past. That's Star of David. Well, you I'm know so as well as I do how many hundreds of thousands of Jewish people passed through Auschwitz. Oh, yes, but how many survived? Um, can you spare me now, sir? Yes. But you will pass on whatever else you get, won't you? Of course. Some hopes. And what have you got? Only the dead man's prints and all that nasty stuff. Yeah. Alan on the knife? Only his. And some smudges. Show me my worn gloves. Mm. Where's Hannah? Hannah? Mrs. Libet. Oh, she's with neighbours. No relations, has she? No. She should be back home again this evening. They should have finished in there by then. Oh. House to house come up with anything yet? Nothing of any interest. Seems the limits kept very much to themselves. They don't seem to have any close friends in the neighbourhood. Yeah, but there's uh, an old hag sniffing around the place lately, according to the home beat man. He says that she's terrified of policemen, dropped her groceries and scurried away at the side of his uniform. Mm -hmm. Who is she? Not known. They're following it up, maybe just a gawker. Hmm. Anything else? That sign on the victim's forehead, probably drawn with a gloved finger in black boot polish. How'd you get on with your chum Carmody? Well, we're going to make a call on a Mr. Otto Bruckner, representative of a West German chemical firm. Bruckner. Yes, Otto Bruckner. Yeah, I thought it rang a bell. They found this in Libitz's front room, dated 26th of January 1968. It reports that her Otto Bruckner, Nazi war criminal, is arriving in London as the German representative of a chemical firm. Goes on to demand that he be that he be brought to immediate trial for crimes and outrages against the Jewish people. Now I wonder why I never kept that. Got my name in the paper. Yeah. Star of David. Set up a meeting with Phil Barkis for me, will you? Somewhere quiet. Tell you, Jacob, it's not over. He's just one more. There's still many others lurking about. With the publicity from this, I can track them down. What publicity, Abraham? Two paragraphs in the evening paper, that's all they gave it. Two small paragraphs between some advert for a television set and a story about a racing driver's new girlfriend. You blink your eyes and you could miss it. There'll be a follow-up. Why? Who cares? Who cares? I do. Others like me. It's finished. There's a new generation grown up. They should forget. Why not? Can you, with the job you have? Had, Abraham, had. Like everything else, it's finished. Not as long as I wear this. I have one too. When this disappears, then it's finished. It's not over, Jacob. Not as long as they scrawl swastikas over the Star of David. Kids, they don't even know the significance of it. And that is the worst condemnation of all. With you, this is a sickness. They murdered millions of our people, and I'm the one who's sick. Thirty years ago. What about Eichmann? He was the last. Why? Because there had to be an end to it. You say that? A Zionist? An agent? I am no longer an agent, Abraham. Not for some years. And Otto Bruckner, is he to be left free to climb and climb, to become a, a diplomat even? An end to it, Abraham. There is a doctor. I could give you his address, a good man. He knows about these things. The rabbi recommends him. You are not the first. Talk to him. I'm not mad, Jacob. This is not a sickness. It's a pain. I know. I know. From Auschwitz. Yes. But I'm not mad.
The door was open. I just came in. I was looking for... Yes? I wanted to see you. I wanted to talk to you. Yes, Mrs. Gruber. You know me? Yes. He told you? A long time ago. Oh, did he? What is it you wanted? I just wondered what was going to happen now, that's all. <laughs> Nothing. Nothing? But it's not as simple as that, is it? I mean, well... You were looking for something. Was this it? It's not much use to me now, is it? You know, what he was doing was only right, wasn't it? I mean, it was the least he could do under the circumstances. Yes, under the circumstances. Who's that? I don't know. Sorry to disturb you, Mrs. Lippert. Uh, what is it? Oh, we just wanted to make sure you were all right. Yes, I am, thank you. May I? Yes. You. you haven't been disturbed or annoyed at all, have you? Disturbed? Annoyed? Fact is, we've had a report about a woman who's been seen hanging about the vicinity of your house. Now, we believe she's a Mrs. Esther Gruber. About middle-aged, wears old clothes, walks with a bit of a stoop. You seen anyone like that hanging about? No. Well, that's all right, then. Nothing to be worried about, of course. Good. She doesn't even come from around here. Is there anything you want or need, Mrs. Libbert? No, thank you. Right, well, I'll get on then. Pop out the back way, shall I? Incidentally, you should keep this closed, you know. Just to be on the safe side. Good night, Mrs. Libbert. Good night. Joseph Liebherz. Yes, Mr. Bruckner. I shall not embarrass you gentlemen by offering you a drink. I know you've got rules about that sort of thing. Do you don't mind if I have one? No, not at all. Yes, Joseph Leibhertz. Oberstum Führer Leibhertz, Mr. Bruckner. I sincerely hope you didn't think I was going to deny all knowledge of the man. As it happens, I was merely clearing my memory. We understand, sir, that you serve with him in the German army. No. Perhaps you'd like to have a look at this photograph before you commit yourself. No, not the German army, Inspector. I served with him in the Allgemeine Division of the SS. I, too, was an Obersturmführer. Our duties included the supervision of guard details for various concentration camps. Including Auschwitz? Including Auschwitz, Superintendent. There wouldn't be much point in my denying that, either. Have you had any contact with Leppert recently? I haven't seen him since uh, 1945. I understand this must be a little embarrassing for you, Mr. Brooks. It doesn't Brooklyn, embarrass me in the least, I assure you. All this happened over 30 years ago. I, like so many others, was a young and stupid man. I did a lot of immature and stupid things, like becoming an SS trooper. Immature? Yeah, of course. I dressed up like a soldier, I had shiny boots, I wore a pistol, I had an elegant uniform, money in my pocket, a little authority, plenty of pretty girls. <laughs> Am I shocking you, Inspector? Just a little, sir. But the superintendent, not so much. I'd like to get back to Joseph Lippert. Look, I stood my trial in Nuremberg in 1947. I was acquitted. In 1952, I was examined by a denazification court in Bonn. I did not at any time knowingly commit any war crime. And that was the verdict of the court. And you think... What sort of a man was Leppertz when you knew him? Petty-minded little moron. Oh. He was a railway porter from Leipzig when he joined the SS. I have no idea how he ever became an officer. 
Maybe he had influential friends, I don't know. He was a rather vicious and cowardly man. Cowardly? How do you explain that? <laughs> when the Russians were advancing on Auschwitz, he uh, led us into an ambush in return for a safe conduct to the West. I believe he finally made it to Austria. Only one of his brother officers survived the massacre. You, Mr. Bruckner? Yes. Motive for murder? Perhaps to avenge all those he sent to their death? But after all this time... But I wasn't thinking of that so much, sir. It could what the inspector be... means is that Leopards knew as much about your background as you did about his. But he had nothing to lose. You did. I see. You think he might have been blackmailing me? Was he? Well, how could he? My past is no secret. Everybody knows what I was. Since I arrived in London in 1968, I have been practically hounded by the editor of a small newspaper. Now, the Star of David. How do you know about that? Do you also know about the Zionist Israeli agent Jacob Harmon? He and this editor worked hand in glove to make my life a misery. They didn't succeed, obviously. Of course not! I have nothing to hide, Inspector. I do not lead a double life. I have no secret collection of Nazi paraphernalia. I am what I am. And I have been exonerated absolutely and completely by a court of law. And your conscience doesn't trouble you at all, Mr. Bruckner? As I have tried to imply earlier on, I was very brash, very stupid, and even younger than you are now. I think we've disturbed you enough for one night, Mr. Bruckner. Uh, are there any more questions you want to ask me? I don't think so. Well, if there's anything else I can assist you with, please don't hesitate to call on me. All right, sir. Thank you very much. Good night. Good night. Good. Pull another stunt like that, I'll have you back on routine duties, and I mean it. All I did was ask him one question. If you can't think of anything better to say, keep your mouth shut. What the hell's his conscience got to do with anything? The supercilious slob got my back up. He thinks because he's been cleared by a court. That's the law. Anyway, I doubt of a man like that would use a knife. I'll put it in the back of the next more his style of execution. It was an execution, wasn't it? Mad. It has to be someone from his past. Does it? Someone. He suffered at his hands, someone who remembers. Probably a psycho by now. What time did you say Barkas was coming? He should be here now. Well, look, tomorrow I want you to go down to the offices of the Star of David. Well, yeah, there, check up on this uh, Jacob Harmon fellow. You want me to do that? That's what I said. Any queries? No, it's just that... What? Well, you usually like to open up any new leads yourself, that's all. Who said it was a lead? Alan. Yeah? Just watch it, will you? Having trouble with Wonder Boy, are you? Yeah, sweating on promotion. It's got a long way to go yet. Thanks, your cup. No thanks. Got something for me? Yeah. A story? Ah. Yeah. Uh, Leber's case. Oh. I want to follow up. It's a dead duck. Ex Nazi stabbed to death. We ran it. Two paragraphs. That's all it was worth. I want some more. Oh, come on. Follow up. On what? Nazi war crimes. Oh, come on, John. It's all water under the bridge. But I need some more information. There are still Nazis about and still Nazi hunters. Give it a give it a bit of air. Maybe somebody will come up with a fresh lead. Well, you'll be having a press conference, won't you? I'd still like a splash. You just want me to stir up the mud. Well, there might be something buried in it. You're making it tough, John. You owe me a favour. There was a nice, juicy hatchet murder in Bridlington. Love Nesbitt the lot. He's bound to lead off with that. I mean, in Bridlington. I always wonder what went on in Bridlington. So? I'll see what I can do. Anything else? Something simple, like cutting my own throat, maybe. What do you know about the editor of a paper called The Star of David? Oh, gent named Lutz something or other. Lutzstein. Very, very small onions, tiny circulation. I don't know. Strong line Zionist, I think. Had a few near misses in the libel courts. Keeps up the crusade while everybody else is busy forgetting it. Screw loose, they say, has the reputation of being a nutter. Hmm. Lead? Oh, I doubt it. Yeah, well, I suppose I'd better be getting on. See you. Oh, thanks, Will. Don't forget the story, will you? No. 
but you have thought what effect it's going to have on the widow. Yes. I thought. I don't understand this memo, Mr. Carmody. Don't understand it at all. Well, the inquiry came from the Home Office. Something to do with Otto Bruckner. You see, they didn't want to poke their noses in. They didn't they? You know what I think? Feels suspiciously like pressure to me. Somebody with influential friends. Oh, no, nothing like that. Well, it better damn will not be, because I won't stand for it. As far as I'm concerned, Otto Bruckner is just another source of information in a murder investigation. He gets no special treatment from me. Well, I suppose he could make a complaint to the Home Office. Oh, complaint about what? Well, he could claim that the conduct of your inquiry had damaged his reputation and affected his future appointment. Well, that would be too bloody bad, wouldn't it? Yes, sir. All right, that's all. Um... No? This memorandum, Superintendent. I'll file it. Mm. Yeah? Ah, oh, Nash. Sorry to drag you all the way down here. I cleared it with your governor. I have your duty report. I was very impressed by it. Nice attention to detail. I'm interested in this woman who's been seen hanging around the Libbets house, uh, Esther Gruber. Ever noticed her in the area before Libbets' death? No, sir. Think Mrs. Libbet knows her? I'm not sure, sir. See, I called in on Mrs. Libbet just after I'd seen the old girl snooping about round the back. Well, Mrs. Libbet said she'd had no visitors. I didn't believe her, sir. And why not? Oh, of course, I could be wrong. No, go on. The kitchen was untidy, sir. And is that significant? Well, the thing that struck me about Mrs. Libbett, sir, right from the start, was how scrupulously clean and tidy she was. Seemed to have a fetish about cleanliness. Now, I'd have said she couldn't abide anything out of place in her kitchen. And I felt that someone else had been there, maybe looking for something. Broken in, you mean? Well, it's not difficult down that way, sir. No one locks any doors. Well, I mentioned this to... Mrs. Libbett, and she denied it all, sir. Uh, I mentioned Mrs. Gruber, but I didn't get any reaction. Anyway, I had a look in the yard, and I thought I caught sight of someone disappearing down a back alley, sir, but it was too dark last night to be 100% certain. What about the other rooms? Did you see into them? No, just the hallway in the kitchen, sir. I didn't want to disturb Mrs. Libbett too much. She doesn't look at all well, sir. No. Well, keep an eye on her as much as you can. Yes. Well, one thing I particularly want you to do, and that is, if you see her going... Hang on. In the kingdom. Hello, Alan Ward. Yeah. That story you got Phil Barkers to run. Yeah. Stirring things up. Is that the idea? What about it? Stirring things up here, all right. Yeah, the same thing. Fascists, or vandals, or skinheads. Young kids, probably. Next week it'll be Pakistanis again. You see, they don't know even the swastika is the wrong way around. This hadn't even been published yet. Abraham never makes a secret of his next issue. And there was this. Yes, there was that piece too. It doesn't matter. He'll be back at his desk again next week. Do you think he knew about Lebherz? Probably. Did you? Yes, it was my job to know about him. I understand you were an agent for a Zionist organization. Once. But my particular department doesn't exist anymore. Once, people like Josef Lebherz were a cause for concern. Oh, you'd be surprised to know how many of them there are in England. In London. Most of them lead completely normal lives. Others, like Lebherz, cannot resist the temptation to relive things that have passed. Do you think Abraham Lutstein was ever likely to take the law into his own hands? You're asking me if he killed Lepertz. I'm asking you if you think he was capable of it. Abraham was in Auschwitz. His wife, 
his child, his whole family died there. He saw them march to the gas chambers. Like all of us, it had an effect on him. He feels that everyone responsible should be made to pay for their crimes. You're evading the question. Because it's not one I can answer. But I tell you this, ten years ago, five years ago, I could have done it. May I go now? I should like to see that Abraham is comfortable. Yes. Thank you. Shalom, Superintendent. Shalom, Mr. Ham. Kids. The sergeant reckons he knows the mob's responsible. Uh, it's too messy. What? Too many bits and pieces. It's not that complicated. Well, you could have fooled me. I wouldn't do that if I was you, Mrs. Gruber. Now, give me the matches. And the bottle is a good girl. I think I found what she was looking for. Where? Upstairs, in a drawer. I've checked. He'd been paying. Well, she must be a nutter trying to burn a house down to destroy this sort of evidence. Any medical history? Long record of psychiatric treatment. She's still an outpatient at some Lombards. Here's the psychiatrist's report. Anything else now? Esther Gruber, widow. Born Krakow, Poland, 1919. Came to UK as displaced person, 1946. Husband died, Auschwitz concentration camp, 1944. Was she in Auschwitz? Evidently not. She's not Jewish, but her husband was. Hmm. Means of support? Small reparations pensions from the West German government. That all. Social security. And this. That follow-up story of Phil Barkas's is getting results all round. Yeah, not exactly the results I was after. Come in. Ah, oh, Mrs. Gruber. Sit down, please. Would you like a cup of tea? I'm sure we could get you one. No, I just want to get out of here, that's all. I just have to ask you a few questions. About Levitz? About what you were doing in their kitchen. It looked very much as though you were going to set fire to the place, Mrs. Gruber. That could have been very dangerous. Then you better put me in jail, hadn't you? You didn't find what you were looking for, then? Eh? Was it this? It's your rent book for that room of yours. Is it? Well, it's got your name and address on it. Why was it in the Libbert's house? I don't know. Was it because Mr. Libbert had been paying your rent? Mrs. Gruber. We've checked. He'd been paying two pounds a week on your behalf directly to your landlord's agent. It was little enough. For what? For what he did. He killed my husband. Him and others like him. Murdering devils. How did you find out about him? God's justice. I spotted him in a DP camp. Came over to England on the same boat, even. Him and his wife and baby. After they took my husband away, I got lodgings just outside Auschwitz. Thought I'd be close by when they released him. I was there nearly a year before I knew he was dead. It was Libertz who finally told me. I think he took pleasure in that. But you didn't report his identity to the authorities when he arrived in this country. I felt sorry for his wife. And you decided to make him pay for your silence. Little enough. Only the rent on my place. That was our understanding. And I never asked him for a penny more. I don't see that I was doing anything wrong after what he did. Do you know how long me and my husband were married before they took him away? Twelve days. Only twelve days. It was just twelve days. That was that was what they did to us. It was twelve You'd never get a charge of blackmail to stick. Not with her mental record. Ah, the chief witness is dead. And why would she knock off the goose that laid the golden egg? Just how golden is two quid a week.
I have a word with the desk sergeant as we leave. He grows dahlias. Gets the most marvellous blooms from his allotment. Tar Hamlet interview room. Inspector Ward speaking. Uh, Nash here, sir. Is the chief superintendent? Yes, he's still here. Hey, hang on. Up now. Yeah? Nash. He wants to have a word with you. Ah. Yes, Nash. Well, sir, I've been following Mrs. Libbert. Yeah? And I thought it worth reporting she's just visiting the local synagogue. Shall I wait here and pick her up, sir? Ah. No, no, it's all right, lad. We'll take it from here. Well done. Bye, sir. Thanks, bye. Yeah, you know, you won a prize once at the Chelmsford Flower Show. Biggest giant flower decorative daily I ever saw. Blooms nearly a foot in diameter. Nursed it like a baby. German name, is it? No. I must tell you, Mrs. Libbert, that you've been observed entering a local synagogue. I've spoken to the rabbi. It is no crime to enter a synagogue in this country, is it? No, of course not. And I have every right. I am Jewish. But your husband was a Nazi. Oh, yes. We were married in 1936, almost one year before he joined the Nazi party. You see, at that time, I was not an Orthodox Jewess, nor was any other member of my family. I never even thought of myself as being anything but German. My father was a civil servant. He worked for the railways. After your husband joined the party? He made me swear to keep my race a secret. He arranged to have our marriage registry destroyed. I became known as Anna. No one ever discovered my true origin. Until now. Yes. But I have made my peace. And I would like to tell how it was to explain. You see, for most of my life, I had denied my origins. Even when I saw what they were doing to my people, I still kept quiet. When they took away my father, my mother and my sister, I kept the secret. To have spoken would have meant disgrace for Joseph and a concentration camp for myself. But the burden grew heavier and heavier. And then you had a child. I wanted to call him Samuel after my father, but of course it was not possible. We called him Henry. Heinrich. After Reichsführer Heinrich Himmler. For my child, it was even more important that I kept silent. But there was no need for that after the war was over. We were fugitives. My husband had been an SS officer. My son was his son. And yet, we did have the chance of a new life here. But it didn't change. I really think my hatred of Joseph began on the day that he joined the party, but it, it grew and it grew every day, every year that passed by. He was always the storm trooper, always the jackboot. It was part of him. He could not forget what he had been. He did not want to forget. 
every day he would get out the swastikas, the badges, the insignias, the photographs. He would play that record over and over again, remembering the things he had done, remembering his cruelty to the prisoners, to the Jews, to my people. We could go over this later. No. Please, uh, I want to finish. And then Henry was killed in the motor accident on the M1. It was a terrible, terrible thing. Like a vengeance on us both. Even Joseph was shocked. For two weeks, he never touched the things in that chest. There was silence in this house. Blessed silence. And then I came back from shopping. I opened the front door and heard the music. Had that started all over again. He could not leave them alone. He could not forget. I went into the room. He looked up at me and laughed. Like I laughed in the old days when they made the jokes about the Jews. And those horrible, obscene things laid out before him. And then I saw the knife on the table. He did not even turn when I walked behind him. <laughs> and then there was silence again. And this? Yes. The Star of David. I had denied it in life. I wanted him to wear it in death. As he made my father wear it on his back. As they marched him into Auschwitz. Well, if she hadn't stopped to draw that star of David on his forehead, she might get away with manslaughter. Yes. Diminished responsibility. I wouldn't bet on it. Well, I expect they'll let her out on parole in a couple of years. Well, there's a letter here from a dealer in Kingston. He specialises in old Nazi badges and curios. He offers 50 quid for Joseph Levens's collection. 50 quid? That's incredible. Oh, I don't know. A friend of mine was once over that much for a pride of old England. Huh? Hybrid rose plant. Took him years to develop. Did he take the money? No, he couldn't, unfortunately. Very tragic. Greenfly got it. <laughs> 